Hi everyone, welcome to Lab Exercise 5.4 where we will be discussing Kingdom Animalia. So the first section here called Exploring Kingdom Animalia, we will be playing a guessing game. Um, if you scan this QR code, you will go to this website called Metazoa, um, a little play on words of Metazoa. Now, if you have not already previously watched the lecture video, this game may be a little bit difficult. So if you want to pause now, go watch that video and then come back, that would be great. But in the meantime, we can play it together. So first things first, click enter the zoo. And then um, it's going to give us Metazoa because we are in Kingdom Animalia. So we have to be guessing something from Kingdom Animalia, a Metazoa. Uh, the mystery animal, the only clue that we have is that it is an animal. So let's just guess any type of animal. I know for a fact, since I watched the lecture video, that Arthropoda is the biggest phylum. So I'm going to guess a type of insect. Let's see what comes up. So there's water bug, stick bug, ladybug. Let's just go with stick bug and we can guess. Ooh. There it goes. We guessed stick bug. So this did give us some extra information. We now know that it is bilateralia or a bilateral animal, an animal that shows symmetry on both sides. But it probably is an insect because it didn't bring up a uh, kingdom arthropoda. So let's try a vertebrate just for fun. Um, fish is another really big uh, group of fish. So let's just go with a clownfish. Mm, is it guessing? Okay, so now I know that I am in U, uh, Utilostomy. It's a clad that includes many different vertebrates um, and Actinopterygii is one of them, which is uh, bony fishes. Um, and then Sarcopterygii are going to be your lobe finned uh, fishes and your tetrapods. So maybe it's a higher order vertebrate. Let's just go to a mammal. I'm going to do a type of rodent. So a mouse. Let's see what it does. So that got us somewhere. It is in the uh, Borea eutheria um, family. Uh, so it has to be a placental mammal. Do, do, do. Okay, so it's going to be a placental mammal, uh, so not a marsupial. Let's, uh, let's just go for it. Let's look at tigers. Okay, that didn't really get us very far. We haven't changed much. Um, it's still placental mammal. So let's try a sloth. Okay, still didn't get much further. Let's try a primate. Let's try a chimpanzee and see if we get further away. No, still not very helpful. Um, it's not a chimpanzee, not a mouse, closer related to a tiger. Let's see if it's a canine. Um, let's call, let's see if wolf is an option. Okay, that didn't help us very much. It is not a in the carnivora family. So mm, let's keep guessing. Maybe it's equine. Mm, nope. Uh, still stuck in the same spot. It mentions undulates. Undulates are like cows, uh, cattle. Let's see if cattle gets us anywhere. Okay, now we've got somewhere we have an arteriodactyl, which are placental mammals that have, uh, they're usually undulates, that means that they ferment their food in a chambered stomach. 
Um, they bear weight on uh, multiple toes, on two of their toes. Mm, so, not a cattle, but let's try a buffalo. Water buffalo. Let's see if that works. No. Okay, now we're getting further away. So it's not a bovine. Um, interestingly enough, whales are actually part of this family. So let's try the orca that's shown in this picture. Okay, so it is an aquatic mammal. Interesting. Um, these are uh, toothed whales. It's not an orca, so maybe it's a type of dolphin. Mm, work for us. Okay, so not part of the dolphin family. Let's go with beluga. I'm not going to do humpback because they do not have teeth. Beluga was the correct answer. So that one was a little bit difficult. Normally, uh, students get it in fewer guesses than I did, but that was fun. And we learned a lot along the way about these different clads and groups of animals within the animal kingdom. And interestingly enough, whales are actually rather closely related to bovines. Um, so that is it for the first activity. The second activity is called observing specimens. If we were in face-to-face -face class, I have face-to-face -face specimens that you're able to observe, hold, and identify. But online, what I want you to do is on the QR code PowerPoint, the one up here where the video is found, there's a button called Click Me. If you click that, you will go to a Kingdom Animalia um, worksheet here. This is also available in our lesson. And these are different um, animals in the nine major phyla of animal, uh, the Kingdom Animalia or the Animal Kingdom. So you are welcome to choose any two of these animals. If you choose Echinodermata, you might choose starfish, sea urchins, or sea cucumbers. If you choose the uh, fish, you can talk about uh, salmon, trout, sharks, any, any kind of fish that you want to talk about. If you talk about birds, um, different types of animals within these phyla. So you will write the common name of the animal their identifying features. For instance, does it display symmetry? The porifera does not have symmetry, um, whereas the echinodermata has a radial symmetry. So different kinds of um, features. The echinodermata has spiny skin and tube feet as well. So anything that you notice about your uh, animal, for instance, uh, spiders may have eight limbs and two appendages. Uh, whereas insects only have six limbs. Then do a small uh, sketch, it doesn't have to be a Rembrandt, just a sketch, and label the phyla. So this will be easy for you because the phyla is mentioned on these um, organisms. So phyla chordata or uh, the nine major phyla, if you click on this button, are circled or highlighted. So in fact, all of these subphyla belong to the one major phyla of vertebrata or chordata. And then invertebrates is a classification. Each of these highlighted um, groups is going to be one of the major phyla. Arthropoda is enormous and has four major subphyla. Um, you just have to mention arthropoda. So after you do that, we are going to work on March Mammal Madness. If you scan this QR code, you will get to this PowerPoint and you can watch the introductory video um, or download a bracket. But I have the bracket attached on the back of the worksheet. So you have the bracket here. The rules are very similar to Mar uh, March Madness in basketball, where these creatures are going to be simulating head-to-head -head combat in an environment of one of those two creatures. 
So read through these rules and objectives because some of the questions on the quiz are related to the rules. We have 65 uh, species featured in this year's March Mammal Madness. So each of these species is going to have a chance to be in a head-to-head -head battle and we want to see who is going to win in the animal kingdom. Now keep in mind not all of these creatures are mammals but they are related to animals. Now, the first three rounds, um, when you do your bracket research, the first three rounds are going to occur in the higher seeded animals home environment. So if we look at this bracket, make it bigger. If we look at this bracket, for instance, we have the okapi, which is seeded number one, and the grass mouse seeded number 16. This means that their battle, their simulated battle, will occur in the Okapi's preferred habitat because it has a higher seed or it's ranked higher. Um, but before we get to that, we first have to do a wild card, which is worth one point. Who do you think would win between a shrew mole and a bumblebee bat? Make your selection, make your guess, fill it out on your bracket here and then you can watch the video. Before you uh, watch the video, sorry, I got dizzy there for a second. Before you um, watch the video though, you can research each one of these mammals by going through the bracket research. Um, the bracket research has information on every single one of the animals that's on this list and they're uh, divided in categories. If you would like to quickly look through them, you can use the menu at the bottom to go to different areas as opposed to clicking through. Um, so look at each one of these. I only require you to fill out the first um, the first round. So the side panels, you don't have to go further into it. In face-to-face -face class, we simply don't have time to go further into it, but it is fun to look at these animals in round one. So fill out one of these brackets, just round one, and then we're going to watch the release video. So round one results. The wild card video will tell you who belongs or who won the wild card, and then they will be seed 16 for Itty Bitty Comeback City um, and fight against the sea otter. And then you will have to decide who should win against the sea otter. The answers to these brackets are located right here for the wild card, for dad bods, mighty stripes, animal engineers, and the itty bitty comeback city. When you are done making your selection and watching the video, you can tally off how many points you got correct. So the wild card, if you got it correct, was worth one point. Round one, every single correct pr prediction is worth one point. So you will add up those points to get your total Points. That's as far as we go in face-to-face -face class, but if you're having fun, you can continue to round two, three, four, and finally the champion. And round two results can be found here, and then the next results can be found here, and then the final reveal of the champion. So you can um, use that information to count up your total points. Here is the same scorecard. Round one points are worth one point. Round two correct predictions are worth two points. Round three is worth three points. Round four is worth five points. Round five is worth eight points. And then if you get the champion correct, it is worth 13 points and you can total up your points here. The important part, however, is that you answer these questions about March Mammal Madness because some of the questions on the quiz will be related to the adaptations that these creatures have which allowed them to win. Um, this week is a really fun uh, week, so I hope that you enjoy it and um, you're welcome to watch all of these videos from the uh, results as well as view the champion. I hope that y'all have a great day and I will see you again next uh, unit, but please don't forget that your unit five exam is coming up.
after you complete 5.4, make sure that you are prepared for that unit five exam. Please keep in mind that the lecture exam is closed note. No notes are allowed to be used and no aids are allowed to be used during the lecture exam. But the lab exam, you are welcome to use your lab handouts. So make sure that you take thorough notes on those lab handouts. Have a great day.